Hello humans, Master Dinnerflax here bringing you low quality content you deserve. And today I'm going over my layer deck. I got first place at locals with it. Um, the reason I'm not doing it with my real cards is because I couldn't get my phone to record this to save my life. So I was just like, fuck it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. Two Diablos, you don't need three you can still do the Diablos loop with it. You can always search it, so there's no actual reason to play three except saying, I want to draw this all the time, and that's actually just not the case. Um, but in replacement, I'm playing two Malefic Stardust Dragon because they those two work very different, but very similar in the same way, uh, except Malefic Stardust can protect Lair from destruction, which is actually really good against cards like Ghost Ogre and just... All kinds of spot removal just very good against it especially phoenix um so these two are very good um i do like having the option to search in between them uh especially this one because if you're attributing something not a re not arima but not your monster uh it you can still summon stardust where you, as you couldn't normally summon diablos doing that so that's pretty good uh three arima and for ties, I am playing four ties targets, uh, level four ties targets, because I think just playing only the level threes is super, super clunky. Um, and like, I always want my cards to be online, so just, I'm playing level fours, and it's Card Guard and Barrier Statue of Abyss. Um, you know what the Barrier Statue does. But Card Guard, it pretty much, when he's summoned, you put a guard counter on him, then you can move it to another card, and while it has that counter, if it were to be destroyed, you can destroy. You can remove the counter instead. So pretty much, it makes ties a barrier statue. They have to out twice before you can even go into the stuff you want to, and it's just super, super good. Um, and then for level threes, Lilith, uh, best card in the deck. If it was, it was like I said before. If uh, this was printed in any other time in Yu-Gi-Oh, it'd be banned. Like it's insane. And then Sangen, Skarm, and Tour Guide for the combo. And then Ash Blossom for the combo, it's the only hand trap I'm playing. Um, something I recently learned, uh, it's not really learned, it's just something I've noticed over time. Uh, hand traps kind of aren't that good. Um, like, the more I play test with hand traps, the more I realize I want these to be cards that are better than what they are. Because they don't protect me, they only hurt my opponent. And like, that doesn't actually do much. If your deck doesn't already capitalize on it and the deck already has so much disruption with like Lilith, Lair, all the traps, uh, the artifacts, Diablos, they have to use multiple cards to get over it and like the barrier statues, like there's so much disruption in the deck that having hand traps, even when you're going second, doesn't benefit you. Like it doesn't do anything you weren't already doing. but. The reason there's even one hand trap in here is because when you ties for Sangin, you always want to have something that you can search and it be immediately usable. Um, so that's why that's in there. Um, and the reason there's a fourth name between the ties targets is because if you use a torment token, it allows you to uh, ties for level threes twice, which is actually pretty cool. And then tour guide on its own is actually pr a pretty strong normal summon. Uh, so I explained the Ash. Uh, it's better than Winter Cherries. Um, even though, like, half my extra deck is only accessible game two, like, it's still better than Winter Cherries. I don't care, like, Sanctimony. So, like, the whole thing is, Hand Traps, I'm not playing because I have no game plan against Goki. I did not make this deck for this format. I made this deck for next format. And next format, if we're still dealing with Gokis, I'm not playing next format. It's just as simple as that. Like, that deck's dumb. I'm not making my deck worse and have worse matchups against everything else just to still lose to Goki. I'm not interested in that. Uh, but I still have cards based on if Goki are in here anyway. Like the One Ash, uh, Scythe with the Sanctums, and then like Lair itself. Like, there's still cards that help you counter Gokis. But this deck isn't trying to beat Gokis because it's just trying not to play against Gokis because, like I said, next format. If they're not gone, I'm not playing anyways. Um, so the two Sanctum targets. I like the variety between them because Scythe is good against uh, uh, faster decks, but
but Moral Taka is good against slower trap heavy decks. Um, and you'll, and like, so like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just really good to have the option between them because this deck's a really grind out of advantage kind of deck. It tributes your opponent's stuff to get its own cards, to get your own cards. And if you're constantly doing that, then sometimes you just want to Moral Taka away a possible like counter to you. So yeah, that's pretty good. Like you don't sometimes you don't even need to stun them. You'll just be so far ahead in card advantage that they couldn't play anyways. Um, so three layer, best card in the deck. Ties very good. Uh, three allure just for consistency with uh, monster heavy hands. Then one up start. Uh, like I said, consistency. Traps. The best trap in the deck. The best trap I honestly think currently in the game. Well, normal trap. Because the activation of this card is so free, even against the worst possible deck you can think of, this is still usable. Like, it's absurd how good this card is. Um, it was literally the MVP of the entire day. But not only that, it's just like, it's everything you want Book of Moon to be and more. Because it affects Link Monsters, it's a minus one card in theory, except if you're bouncing extra deck monsters. But more importantly, you can use it proactively on your own stuff like Malefic Stardust. Because the Malefics, they restrict your battle phase to where only that monster can attack. But if you're going into battle phase with like uh, monsters, you attack with Malefic first, bounce it with Compulse, attack with the rest of your stuff. They're not dead, just summon the Malefic again. Just like, you can do so much proactive great stuff with this and even if like you can't do too much with it you can always just bounce their monster to their hand and just attack for game like the card's insane like this is the least out of all the cards i changed around between siding and all that stuff compulse never left my main deck like this this is insane the only thing i can think of is i was i'm wanting to play in permanence maybe um like, assuming I go buy it, depending on what next format is. But if I do, um, someone suggests, oh, you should replace them for the Compulses. No, no. Compulse is actually just dumb. I'd probably place allures for uh, the impermanences. But we'll, we will see. Uh, three Sanctum. Uh, this, is pro this is good. But uh, between the Ties stuff and the Sanctum stuff... These are always what gets cited out, like the artifacts, the ties combo, like uh, certain parts of the like ties combo get cited out, not everything. But you like cut ties, you cut a sanctum, you cut all this for siding. Because the way this deck works is siding is very different than what you expect. Because since it's an anti-meta deck, your side deck isn't options against decks. Your deck, your side deck is made for an anti-meta deck going second. That's what a side deck for is in an anti-meta deck. You pretty much have to change nearly everything because your opponent's going to be siding in like back row hey evenly match crap like that and you just got to say no I'm I'm doing this. So yeah uh three back to the front very good um it's pretty cool. Uh, two Mind Crush lets you play around evenly matched, and just a good card in general. And if it's not even on a line, you can always compose something and just hit it out that way. And then Eradicator. Uh, it's the only virus I want to play, because it's um, the only good virus that you can tribute your opponent's links to activate. Full Force is the only other good virus, and uh, you can't hit links with that, so I just want to play Eradicator. Um, for the extra, Wee Witch, Link Spider, Underclock, Nightmare Cerberus, Phoenix, and Unicorn. I didn't actually have Unicorn at the locals. I only had a uh, Agashek, but it should have been Unicorn. I learned that a hard way. But um, yeah, no Boral Load because any situation where you can make Boral Load, you should either already be about to win, or you even if you're going up against an opponent's Boral Load. Uh, activate layer Lilith effect. Like, there's no, no reason to ever make Boar Load because it's so expensive to make and you're like, why would you put, like, three monsters that 
are disruptive. Why would you put all your why would you put all your eggs in one basket in an anti-meta deck? It doesn't make any sense. So I didn't, and it was the right call. Um, two Stardust for the Malefics. And remember what I was saying about the side deck? Well, half my extra deck is inaccessible game one. And I'm totally fine with that. Because in my extra deck yesterday, I went into We Witch once, and I banished the both Stardust at least once, but I banished at least one almost every match. Um, game one. Like, that was my extra deck. I didn't even go into, like, these cards. I didn't need to. But they're there just because you sometimes want the utility of them. And Link Spider is only in here, so you can actually co-link your Nightmares when you want to use their effects. So, yeah. Uh, so we got Mega Fleet uh, and Fortress. Uh, Mega Fleet you already know, but Fortress is really good because uh, I I made a lot of this deck at Locals, depending on... Pe I, I thought people were going to be trying out the new invoke stuff and it turns out they were and the reason fortress is so good is because when they make their alistair link and they go one to two mechaba behind it your mega fleet's not going to hit them but if you go fortress dragon you can actually uh just contact away their mechabas one or two of them and then just beat over their link and they've lost kind of everything so that's really good um and uh, these are kind of cool in the extra main extra deck, like not in the side deck, because uh, if you're actually playing against Cyber Dragon, c Cyber Dragons, which if you're going to a locals, you might as well think about it. You can just contact away their board for free. Like you literally gain a card for doing nothing and breaking your opponent's board in the process. Like. That's always really fun to watch the expression of that happen. Then we got two wind off for the side. Uh, I really like this shawl uh, side deck. Then three cyber wind dragon. I'll have to explain that soon. They're actually going to be the last cards I explain. So for the side deck, we got three cyber dragon, uh, one beast, one dragon. I like the option between the two. It's kind of like how I did with the sanctum. And these are always so it's funny. Like uh, the three doll fusion replaced the three sanctum. And the two stalls replace the two uh, artifacts. So it's actually really funny how that works. Um, but it's really, really cool um, to go second and fuse uh, Diabolos and a beast out of your deck. And then go, like, Disruption. It, it's really cool. Um, I actually really like that. And for these, I cited, in, I cited four traps. These traps were for anything back row related, uh, Sky Striker, True Draco, uh, Ultra Geist, anything like that. But um, this is really cool because the reason Dust Tornado is in here is because not only does it guarantee Lilith gets to search back row removal once, but it guarantees uh, Lilith gets to search back row removal twice. And if you draw one, you still get to resolve it once. And if you draw two, well, then you don't need to search uh, back row removal. You can just search another thing like uh, Compulse or Mind Crush or whatever. So, yeah, these were really good. Um, it, it, it is actually really good. Um, I didn't cite it in too much, but the one time I did, it turned out to be powerful. These were the last cards I wanted to explain. These were for um, Invoked... Trick Star and World Chalice. Um, these cards against those decks are insane because this is another one of the cards you can play that forces your opponent to use their disruptions before you have to even do anything. And what I mean by that is um, if they have Meltdown and they have Mechaba, you summon this, and in order for that Mechaba to survive, it has to drop. Two, you, your opponent has to drop two Alistairs. And if they're dropping two Alistairs, that means they probably no longer have Monster Negation in their hand. And then you can just do whatever. And like, uh, against Royal Chalice, when they have a uh, Waterfront, you just summon this, beat over Gamma Seal. Trickstar, they better have Scapegoat. Um, otherwise, they literally lose to this thing. Uh, it's really absurd. It's searchable uh, with Arima. It's an Eradicator target. Um, even if your opponent doesn't have a field spell, you can just play yours. Oh, God damn it! It's just, like... It's insane. 
it's like one of the best things. It's probably the best card in my side deck. <sighs> it was really, really, really good. Um, especially against Invoke because they always had Meltdown. And when you're in a situation where your opponent can never activate Mechaba because you're either tributing it for cost or you're just beating over it with Malefics, like, it's really good. So, yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And tell me what you think. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to actually use the real cards. I really wanted to because I got some of these in, like, really cool rarity and I got, like, all the deck finished finally. And I was really upset that I just couldn't, um... I, I couldn't give you the real deck profile. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. And remember, Master Dinnerflex will take your soul.